um, what's due uh, in lab next week. Uh, so we're going to have our second quiz next week in lab, and then we're moving on to lab three. Lab two should be signed off. You should come to lab with lab two finished. Um, and then lab three, remember, you're going to have two um, class periods to work on that. So uh, let's start by talking a little bit about some of the quiz things that I wanted to talk about. So uh, your quizzes should all be graded. You should have gotten feedback already from um, the grades on D2L. Uh, you should see when you look at the grades, uh, there should be um, a filled out rubric in the comments of the feedback. So you should see where you got your points or, or what was taken off. Um, the quiz was pretty straightforward this time, so I think most people got through parts um, one and two just fine. So part three was where I said I was going to have you do something new, and most of you um, got either really close or got it, so it was great. Um, so the first thing you had to do was use the input function to get prompted information from the user, and um, there was two options for this. The first option is uh, that you do the prompt as normal, right here. And then when the user gets the prompt, they have to put the names in single quotes. That's the only way to work. The second option is to add a second input to the function call, um, a, an S in single quotes. And that way, when the user uses the function, or when the user inputs it in, they don't have to put the quotes around the, the string. Yeah. Is that back after the user supposed to be there? Oh, no. And this shouldn't be capitalized either. I'll fix this before I post this slide. Um, so, um, so a lot of you were doing that first part, and, and then you never got it to work because you never put the single quotes in. So I gave um, instructions on how to grade it under that circumstance. Um, if you wrote that, if you did option one and you gave instructions on how to input the name, then you got full credit for it. Um, but if you didn't, um, or you had a comment option, you never got it, then you just didn't get 100% full credit. But regardless, pretty close. Um, for the display, um, this isn't the exact display, but you basically had to com combine um, a variable with a string, a variable with a number, and then a string. So we had done um, just the variable with the number and then a string before. And so you just had to add that username that's already a string in there and put in some other stuff as well. So uh, I think a lot of people were close to this too. We also use F print F, which I saw a bunch of people doing as well. Um, any questions about that? OK. So great job on the quiz um, overall, uh, and I hope this, just after taking it, you should have like a little bit of a better idea of, of what the quizzes are going to be like. Okay, so what did you learn in topic two, the one we just finished and the one that we're going to have a quiz on this next time? So this was our array topic, we learned how to create, access, and manipulate arrays. A big important part of it is deciding on whether to use element by element calculations or matrix algebra and understanding what that dot does. Um, how to access arrays. So uh, when I worked with a lot of you on the lab, um, some of you were using a single index notation to access the 2D array from lab, but most of you were using a two index notation, which is a lot easier because it's rows and columns rather than numbering um, uh, every element um, using a single number, which is much more difficult to use. Um, we've, we've learned how to allocate memory to arrays before filling, especially for adding to an array. Um, there's a couple new functions you learned about top, this topic, length, size, one, zeros, reshape. And then in the lab, uh, you should have used the find um, function to locate um, parts of the array that fit a condition. So those are all the new things that we learned um, in that topic. So that's um, what the uh, quiz will cover next week. There is, here's my tip or my trick or my bug that you might have run into from this last <coughs> lab. So let's say I have an array that I filled with 1 through 10. If you try to access the 11th element of that array, you'll get this error message that says index exceeds matrix dimensions. And I think a lot of you have seen that. 
So when you get it in this context, it actually makes a lot of sense because you're like, oh yeah, because it's only 10 big and I tried to access 11. But you're going to see that error in lots of different ways that are, is going to be less obvious to fix. And so I tried to give you an example of that. So let's say you accidentally overwrote the disk function, which I still have <laughs> quite a few people do. Um, so if you overwrote the disk function and then you tried to use it, like right here I just tried to display hello, you get the exact same error message because you're basically um, putting in a string which it is interpreting as the index that you're trying to access and that array only has one element. But it's like, it's the same error but it's like not as easy to understand what that error is. Does that make sense? Okay. This is an error that you'll see all the time and it doesn't always take you directly to the, um, the fix. So I wanted to point that one out. Yeah. Just clear it out. So you can clear all. Um, you know what you should do um, with all of your functions, especially your quiz, um, you should just type clear all as your first line of code um, when you're writing the function. Uh, because I noticed that, so just so you know, this is new in MATLAB that all of your, when you run that script, all of your variables go into the workspace. It didn't used to work like that. It didn't used to do that. So what happens is you might have de defined a, a variable either in your command window or at the end of your code, and then you're using it at the beginning of your code, and then when you send it to us and we run it, it's trying to get a variable that it doesn't know about yet, but it was working fine on your computer. If you clear all at the top of your file, you can be really confident that when we run your file, that we're running it in the same exact manner you are. So we, um, this, we have a script file that we run the, the um, quizzes on, and um, it clears out everything in between every one of your files that we run. So um, uh, it's just a MATLAB script file that um, all the grading is done in. So anyway, uh, I'm going to actually move this over the dot cam because it's a little easier for you to see it live rather than on the computer. Um, <clears throat> so that's it for the review. Today we're going to be talking about um, logical and relational statements. And what's exciting is that Many of you actually started doing this uh, when you were working on the last, uh, the last assignment. So some of you experimented with some of these um, relational statements instead of using the find command. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So we are going to be introducing a new class so, or a new, ver uh, a new uh, data format type um, to do all of this um, logical and relational stuff. And um, the, the class is um, a logical class. And it's also a, called a Boolean data type um, in other languages. And it is uh, the data type that holds true and false um, information. So this da data type um, only has two possibilities, a one and a zero, a true and a false. So. Um, all programming languages have something um, like this, and in MATLAB, we just use 1 and 0, but it has to be converted to this Boolean data type. Um, the 1 and 0 defaults to its numeric equivalent, the actual number 1 and 0, um, but if you convert it to a logical class, then the 1 is true and the 0 is false. And so that's what we're going to be using a lot um, in this topic is... Um, this logical class. So what are we going to do with that? So first, we're going to learn about relational operators. And relational operators' purpose is to pose true and false questions. So it's the only way that the computer is able to convert um, decision-making 
um, that you would make as a human into a computer language. So these are used to pose true and false questions. So let me first just show you all of them and then we'll do a couple examples of how they work. Okay, so there's greater than and less than. And so the greater than and less than symbols are used for those two relational operators. Um, Seems obvious. Other programming languages will use like GT for greater than or LT for less than. So the syntax does change um, across different programming languages. And then if you want to check if things are equal, you have to use a um, double equal sign. And can anyone tell me why you would need two equal signs? Because if you only use one sign, this equals that. Yes. Right, exactly. So one equal sign is devoted to a definition exclusively. Two equal sign is used for um, an, a relational operator to determine if something is equal to something else. And then there's all the other ones, um, the combinations. So you can have greater than or equal to. And then less than or equal to. And then the last one is not equal to. That is a squiggly. It's um it's like on the far left top of your keyboard. Tilde. Squiggly. That's what it's called. <laughs> um and uh, <coughs> with these six relationships, you're able to combine them to, um, to do any relationship that you need. Question? Yes, they have to go in that order. That's right. Any other questions? Sit. All, all of these that have, um, they have order to them. Okay, so let's just look at some examples of this. I'm going to show you some of these things on MATLAB, but these are um, straightforward enough that I'm not going to type them in. Um, so if you type into MATLAB a relational operator, like uh, 5 is less than 3, is that true or false? That's false. So the output to MATLAB is going to be a logical class num a logical class number. <coughs> um, sorry, it's zero. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote one. Um, that states whether or not that conditional statement was true or false. So it's false, so you get a zero from that. Um, if you did 5 plus 2 equals equals... 7, for example. So it's not a definition, it's checking are those two things equal to each other? You're going to get a 1. <coughs> now, you don't normally do this with numbers like this. Usually you have things held in variables and you're trying to check to see if these things are true like you did with the find command. Um, but this is just an example of the output you get from those types of conditional statements. Any questions about these relational operators? Okay, so you can try those out. Just type them directly into MATLAB and that's what you'll get. I'll show you the other ones in MATLAB. Okay, so the second part of this topic is understanding um, logical um, operators. And these are used to combine relational operators because typically you have many conditions that you're trying to check to see uh, if they are satisfied.
So it strings together a bunch of conditions. So let's say you have condition one and condition two. There are two sets of conditions that are using relational operators. Um, you basically need to have some sort of and or logical operator that can combine a variety of relational statements. And this is where, um, if you remember from the pretest, there was a bunch of logical questions, and all of this falls under just like a, um, if you've ever taken any logic classes. Uh, so basically, you can use and or or. Those are your two options. So with and, if you have two true statements and you have an and, that means that both of them have to be true in order for the output to be true. So if something is true and something else is true, then the result is true. Does it have to be capitalized? This is actually not the syntax yet. I'm just showing you the logic first. Sorry. Um, so let's just go through all the different combinations of logic pairings. So if you have um, a, a logical operator and um, and one of them is true and one of them is false, then it is not going to be true, right? If the requirement is that both things are true with that and clause, then if they're not both true, then, then you get a false out of that. With the or statement, it's not, that's not the case. So the or statement is either can be true and then I want the output to come out as true. And so even if one of them is false, the condition is still satisfied, the condition is still true. So um, that's sort of the logic uh, for um, com combining um, conditional statements. You either want ands or or. So ands are used if you always want both of the things to be true. Ors are used if you want to, if you, if either condition can be true and you still want the um, the condition to, to go through. Um, will or still be still be true if both are true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what this one is here. So one or one, it still comes out as a one. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, let me give you the syntax. So the um, Ampersand, is that how you say this word? It's the worst. Ampersand? Stan? Sand. Got it. Ampersand is used for the and statement, and the or is a vertical line. You have a question? We're going to talk about that. For now, and and vertical line are the are the the is the syntax in MATLAB. <laughs> okay, so there are two types um, of logical operators in MATLAB. There is the uh, single and the double versions of these. Um, the other one that, that exists is um, the not. So the little squiggly or the tilde is just um, the opposite. So you could write your condition um, um, in, in its opposite form and put the tilde in front of it. Sometimes that works out better depending on what it is. So you could say um, whatever condition you don't want and then just do the, the tilde on the outside of it. Um, so, uh, so what's the difference between um, these two types of log logical operators? So... Um, the double stops computing as soon as the result is known.
where the single will look at element by element. Um, for compa um, comparing matrices. So I have some examples of this that we'll look at, but basically um, <laughs> we're mostly going to be using the double. We don't do a lot of this, um, these logical um, statements for entire matrices, just that it's not the nature of what the assignments are, are like in, in this class. Um, but um, if you're comparing um, uh, statements um, and the first one already di didn't satisfy the condition, this one would stop um, where this one would look at every element and make sure every element was um, true. So let's move over to MATLAB and look at a few different examples here. Okay. So I'm going to start by um, doing, I'll put up a statement and then I'll give you guys just a minute to see if you can tell what the output will be before I enter it in so you can see if you can read the, uh, the logic before I enter it in. So we're going to pretty much always use the double of everything, um, but let me just show you the difference between the two. Um, okay, so I have two matrices and, um, or two arrays, and um, when you do A and B um, equals, equals one, operands, yeah. So the double won't let you compare those two arrays together, where the single will just take every element and do that logical comparison. So what this, um, what this statement I just wrote in was take these two arrays that I defined and tell me um, when um, both of them are one, right? And we don't do a lot of stuff like this, so um, it's not a huge deal, so you just always use the double. But um, that's what the single is used for if you ever need to check like an entire array of conditions. So um, let's just look at some different combinations of, um, of these things and see how they, they look. So my first example I have for you is I'm actually going to define um, a variable that will hold whether or not this statement is true or false. And so I'm going to do... Um, A, uh, a string of logical and relational statements here. So I want this statement to tell me um, if the variable a holds a value that is either equal to 0 or 1 over that value is less than 10, I want it to be true. Okay. So right now I've set A to equal to zero. So what should come out of this um, logical statement? True or false? It should be true. So um, you can see that it gave out a one for that logical statement. And um, you could change A to be, uh, let's try two, and then run it. And um, for 2, it's not 0, so it doesn't satisfy this first one, but 1 over 2 is less than um, 10, so the output is still true. So what could I put in for A that would make this false? Point, yeah, some, some decimal, so point 0.1. Isn't, isn't small enough, right? Because that will still not satisfy this. It'll be 10 less than 10. So you need to even go smaller. So I'll try 0 0.01. And then I'll do it. And so there we got a false statement. Yeah. 
So even though you only put last time, if without putting the last time equal, it's still going to return. For point one? Is that what you mean for point one? Yeah. yeah, because it would say that that has to be less than 10. And yeah, so over, I was doing the division. So 1 over point 0.1 is 10, and 10 is not less than 10. Yeah. Wait. No, that's not what I thought. So that's not true. Oh, because it doesn't satisfy either. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I didn't mean that. That is confusing. Um, so yes, point one is an option <laughs> to um, return a zero as well. Yeah. Is that, was that your question too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I don't actually know the answer to that. Probably. Nope, you don't need the spaces. Um, Okay, and then the next one that I wanted to show you is, um, well, I kind of already showed you that actually with the A example. Um, but let me just show you one with the single as well. So you could string together um, a series of, um, of a, an array with zeros and ones, and you could use the single um, sign because this is actually a little bit different logic than what I showed you. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going, when you have just the and sign, it's going to tell you when those two things are the same, um, which is a little different than what I showed you before. So the and sign by itself with two arrays um, will tell you, will give you back um, which of those are um, both true, or I'm sorry, both equal. All right, the next thing I want to show you is logical indexing, which is what you're going to use for your lab. And so um, most of this is actually in um, the command window, um, but if you want to just write it in your notes, this is called logical ind indexing. So a single vertical line is only used on matrices? Yeah, for um, logical operations on matrices, both of them, whether they're single or double is the same. You know what? I think it does. I didn't actually I didn't actually know this, but I think it actually assumes that the ones and zeros are logical. So let me check real quick. Well, I already did that with with this one. I actually wanted to see what this is. So B, yeah, it converts it in, it converts them into logical statements when you use the and like this. Um, Yeah, so yeah, so let's try it with something else. So I'll put threes and fours matching. Yeah. That actually doesn't do what I thought it did. Um, so it's skipping the zeros. Uh, or it's reading them as false, yeah. But that doesn't make sense if it's mixing logic with numbers. So, yeah, so it's matching anything other than zero right now. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to look into it more. But this isn't how we're using the operators. I was just trying to show you what the single one did. Um, but... I clearly don't know exactly what it does, so I'll figure that out. Um, so um, logical indexing is what we're going to use um, for the assignment, so I want to show you a little bit about that. Um, so I'm actually going to use the same, uh, some of the same data that you're going to be using in this. So I'm going to create a cell array. that holds some um, types of trash. This is what you're going to do in your lab assignment. So this is the same types of trash, trash that you have. 
So I just listed five. And then I'm going to create um, another variable, years, and it's going to hold the number of years it takes on average for those types of trash, trash to decompose, and the indexes match up. So glass is 500 years, um, furniture is 50, and so on, as I'm entering these in. We did this kind of with the last assignment, too, where we kind of associated the two different variables, indices, um, in this way. So I want to show you how you can kind of use these relational operators. So it's very similar to the find command that you guys just used. So uh, if you just put in an array and put in the condition, the output is a um, array that holds the logical zeros and ones on which, which elements held true. So it doesn't give you the element locations like the find command does, but in, instead it just creates an array the same size and puts zeros and ones in there. Um, so what you can do then, and you'll see that this is much easier than the find command in a lot of ways, is if you put that condition inside an array that you want to display, then it will just show you which ones satisfy that condition. And so this is a much cleaner way, and if some of you use the find command to do this, um, MATLAB even might have suggested that you did this instead. <laughs> um, and this has a lot more um, uh, strength. And so what we did is we even plugged it into our um, array that's holding the names and associated it that way. Uh, one thing that if you try this and try to do it yourself, you know what, I'm not even going to say anything, I'm just going to see if it works because I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay, so you can't make up your own um, logical operators by just putting in zeros and ones because those will be thought of as indices, that's their default. But you can convert them to logical operators using a function called logical. And that will take those zeros and ones, convert them into logical statements, and then it will work. So zeros and ones don't automatically get used in this Boolean fashion, so you have to be careful about it. But um, I've created some over here uh, if you, if you look when I created that B, you can see in your workspace it'll be labeled as a logical um, variable. So you'll be able to tell whether it's a logical var variable or just a regular variable um, by the labeling. Okay, um, the last thing I want to show you today is um, an if statement, and that's the last part of this topic. Something that we're going to do a lot more with in the next topic, but I wanted you guys to at least start seeing it um, in this topic and it uses all these relational operators. So the format of <clears throat> an if statement is that um, an if statement is basic, basically a decision making structure for, um, for MATLAB. And so we use them a lot when we're dealing with big pieces of data, and it allows <coughs> that those conditions to get tested, um, and then only operate or only execute commands when those conditions are true. So you can put a relational condition <coughs> right here, and I'm calling it um, condition one, and then anything inside the loop will get executed if that condition is, um, or sorry, it's not really a loop. Anything inside um, the if and the end will get executed only if that condition gets satisfied. So for example, I could, um, I could just write like a really simple uh, prompt to ask the user what is 2 plus 3. And then I could put a condition here where I take the output of that input and say that um, if the answer is correct, so if the person puts in five for the answer, then I could maybe tell them good job, <laughs> right? <coughs> so the idea is that it checks a condition and it only executes commands in between if that condition is true. Um, you could also provide additional options for the if statement using else commands. 
So I could do an else if statement, which allows me to put an additional condition. So I could say, <laughs> if the person puts six, I could say something specific about their answer, like really close, not quite, uh, subtract one. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, and then I could even prompt them again to give them another chance. So I could say try again, and then I could just repeat this prompt and let them have another chance at doing it. Um, and then maybe I could nest in another one. Um, this really only works once we start doing loops and we can start asking multiple times. But you can put any number of commands in here. And then if you do an else, not an else if, then you don't need a condition in any other option. So if someone picks four, four, three, any other number, they're going to go into another set of commands that will be executed if under, under any other condition. But it's not required that you have an else. You could have no else and just end the statement after there as well. So you're going to um, play around with this if else construction at the end of your pre-lab um, to start experimenting with how this construction works. And then um, uh, the lab, you're going to do a lot with the relational and logical statements. And I did it. It worked. So, if you're wondering. So you guys can hear this? Like, I can't hear me talking. Like, you can hear it even in the front on the mic.